It is very important to keep one's eyes and ears wide open, everyone. Otherwise, you miss things. You don't hear them. You don't hear, smell, or see the beauty of the wilderness, which I'm sure Taylor will do just now. There are a whole lot of hippopotamus in the gurgling brook, and I believe we have some questions about them. Time. The answer is, I don't think so, Paul. Um, we have yet to see that. Unfortunately, these cameras do not work at night time, so we're unable to tell you if they do at night entirely. And across at night, and we said, well, we didn't really know, because he didn't know either. He said he'd be fascinated to know. We're hoping that perhaps one day our cameras will pick something up like that. And then, Brenda, you're wondering if any of the elephants cross the crossings. Probably do, Brenda. I think you'll find that they spend quite a lot of time going to and fro over the river. But, of course, for them, it's not really a huge, um, a hugely taxing thing because they're very tall and nothing is going to go through a, an elephant except maybe a very vicious crocodile for a tiny one. Now, we have a hippopotamus skull here. There it is. And, well, I'm filming it, you'll see, so it's a little bit, uh, it might be a little bit wonky, but I think it looks all right. But what I wanted to show you is the difference in the size, or, or the similarity in the size between an enormous crocodile and a hippopotamus. And there you can see them there. And they are roughly the same size, but the hippo, well, they're roughly the same length, but the hippos is much taller, obviously, and you can see it's got a much more substantial bottom jaw. Now, that said, as I put it down here, you just see if I can do this. Is that still sharp, Rebecca? Does that look vaguely sharp? That is not sharp. All right, that is good. There we go. What we have there... It's much lighter and therefore less dense than the crocodiles. And what's interesting, if we flip this over, I'll flip it over and then I'll come back to the camera. There we go. What here, there, just sort of over there, is probably about five or six times the size of the reptilian brain in the crocodile, which I think is rather fascinating. And we can just take you around these vicious things. And I tell you, if you were to see this skull, not knowing that it was a hippo, you may well assume that it was, in fact, a terrifying predator of some kind and that those teeth couldn't possibly only be used for defence and fighting over ladies. Now, Mike, you're wondering if hippos can jump. If we cut back to the river, we might actually be able to see them jumping. There we go, we're back on the river now. And you can see there that there is not a huge amount of jumping going on, but they do jump, Mike. They do quite a lot of leaping about. Let me just go back out of this one. Oh, it seems that there's a bit of wobbling going on on the <laughs> No, this is the wind. There we go. Uh, but we definitely see hippo jumping about and cavorting quite often. You can see the wind is really coming up now. Let's just go from side to side here. I wonder if we're not going to have another big storm this afternoon, maybe. I think there's definitely been water. I remember the river being this full yesterday. Let me zoom out again. There are some people on safari, luckily behaving themselves. Oh, uh, hang on a second. It looks like there might be a crossing. No, there's a topi. They don't normally do a huge amount of crossing. Although they have done, in the last few days, they did... Have a look at these topi. Right, let's look at the topi. Not renowned for crossing, but they do do it, and certainly one or two got.
think those are quite special. I wonder if they won't come down and try and cross the river. And then I noticed a very nice bird. I think it's yellow-billed stork that Steph watched catching a feech yesterday. Oops, wrong way. All right, I believe we are experiencing black screens again. Let's head across to Taylor, who's looking for a leopard.